corruption allegations in the past, with claims suggesting judges routinely accept bribes in exchange for favourable rulings. But the timing of the suspension has raised eyebrows. On Monday, the legal case against Sonogo was adjourned indefinitely. Well, all right, we now want to take a look at the latest statistics, bearing in mind that Transparency International has just released the Corruption Perception Index, where Kenya um, has actually lost a point. We were ranked, or we scored 28 points out of a possible 100 in the 2017 Corruption Perception Index. Now, bearing in mind, right now we've scored 27 points, zero being um, highly corrupt and 100 being, you know, very clean in terms of of this corruption perception index. So let's just take a look at a brief history in terms of the Transparency International report. As you can see, Kenya scored 28 points out of the 100 on the 2017 Corruption Perception Index. Remember, that is in 2017. They've just released a recent report that shows that we have scored 27 points this time around in the 2018 Corruption Perception Index, um, showing that we've actually gone down by one point. Now, this bearing in mind the recent wave um, by the executive to actually make its mandate to punch out this vice called corruption in the country. Um, we have to bear in mind that. Let's check out the other board as well in terms of what Kenya has done. Corruption index in Kenya averaged 22.62 points from 1996 until 2017, reaching an all-time high of 28 points in 2017 and a record low of 19 points in 2002. Keen to bear in mind, before 2017, we were actually ranked at uh, 26, at 26 in 2016, and at 25 in 2015. Now, Kenya has been ranked number um, 144 out of 180 countries in the just released 2018 CPI report, dropping one place. Now, that's what stands out in this particular Transparency International report. Uh, there we have it, the rank in 2017, 143rd, and Kenya was ranked 145th out of 180 nations in 2016. Just some brief statistics right there. Let's take a look at some of the controversial corruption scandals that have actually plagued our country, Kenya, in time. In 2014, keen to note the 24.6 billion school laptop tender awarded to an Indian farm, which was eventually cancelled after multiple questions were raised. In 2015, we well know of the Karen Lance saga, a controversial 8 billion right there. Still in 2015, this time round in December, the Bangal Galana irrigation project, the piloting phase of the irrigation project, gobbled up at least 7 billion Kenya shillings right there with no tangible results. Over to March 2016, we well know of the youth fund scandal. 180 million Kenya shillings was involved. We saw a couple of heads rolling from that particular youth board. In 2014, um, 215 billion euro bond cash, which remains unaccounted for to date. That is one of the prolific um, corruption scandals. NYS 1 and 2, which is very, very um, fresh in our memory. The scandal that cost Kenyans billions of shillings. In 2018, the, Rara the Raraka land scam and the Kenya pipeline scandal as well as some of the notable corruption scandals that we have faced as a country in the just concluded year. Now, Kenya is set to continue engaging with international partners in fighting graft. This is some of the resolutions that were brought forth in the just concluded anti-corruption um, conference that was held last week, Thursday, Friday. Remember, a multi-sectoral initiative um, involving various partners from the government, from the private industry as well. This is some of the resolutions that were brought forth. The state would continue engaging with the international community. Kenya would actually crack down on high-profile corruption cases. Uh, the JSC was put on the spot in order to clean up its system, among other resolutions.
All right, just to break this down for us and also take a look at the cost of corruption on business and the Kenyan economy, let's bring in Wangari Mwike, who is an economist and is actually joining us from our Coast Bay studios. Many thanks for joining us. Good afternoon, Wangari. Now, let's build up on the latest Corruption Perception Index by Transparency International. We scored 27 points out of a possible 100 with zero being highly corrupt. Now... Um, just to take a look at this, errors are prone in such indexes, yes, but should it speak a lot about the fight against corruption in the country, especially bearing in mind the renewed war against graft by not just the executive, but various sectoral bodies in the government as well? Thank you for having me. I think what we should also consider is that... Um as a nation starts becoming better at um, catching graft, it becomes more evident and more of these uh, cases start coming up in the, in the public sphere. So as the CPI is called the, the Corruption Perception Index, also looks at what uh, the country is perceived to be um, having in terms of corruption, of course it starts becoming more evident because uh, a lot of corruption is starting to be captured, which is a good thing. All right, all right. Um, now, a multi-sectoral initiative, you know, against corruption culminated last week in the anti-corruption conference with various sector leaders, you know, drawn from the private sector. We also had representatives from the government, the national government led by President Uhuru Kenyatta. Trade unions, civil societies and the likes actually came together um, under the banner of a unified, sustainable war against corruption. How important is this cooperation within various sectors in the government and private sector as well in making sure that, you know, corruption in this particular country does not continue being a cause of worry? This is especially important because, as we know, with corruption, you have a supply side and you have a demand side, the people who ask for the, the bribes and the people who offer the bribes. So having a collaborative approach against the, with the different sectors is very important so that the supply chain or the value chain, as it were, when it comes to corruption, is dealt with e efficiently and at every step of the way. All right, now the national government, you know, has clearly shown that fighting corruption is among the top priorities and you know but the symbiosis among various arms of the government is questionable hence the blame game that has been ensuing for the past um, couple of months you know where the judiciary is put on sport in terms of being slow you know the wheels of justice yes they grind but they might be grinding a little bit slower in terms of bringing those particular individuals to justice now if we look at our economy right now, the, the central bank has just said that Kenya is performing a close to its potential. But we well know of what um, the corruption causes to the Kenyan economy. How important is this symbiosis in terms of um, working clearly with the mind of working against corruption in the country? When it comes to uh, corruption in the country, I think when you look at um, how uh, the country is perceived, for example, uh, internationally. So if you look at um, uh, the way the costs when it comes to uh, the economy, we have, uh, you know, you talked about some of the cases. You talked about the NYS case. You talked about uh, some of the scandals that are coming up. Um, those are costing, some of them are equivalent. When you talk about seven billion, that's almost equivalent to the amount that a county uh, has for uh, supplying uh, services to the people. We're talking about agriculture, health. Like, for example, you said seven billion in, in one of the graft cases. Like Kipia's budget that it gets from the, from the national government is four billion. So you, in, in, this, in effect, what you're doing is almost wiping off the livelihoods, the lives of a whole county. And as these cases start to grow, and you have several uh, of these cases, each of them 7 billion, 4 billion, 5 billion, you're essentially deteriorating the ability of the, of the country to provide services to the people, which, provide, which is a big deficit. And, and at the end of the day, it slows down our economy. All right, perhaps as we conclude, um, the business 
our sector in the country um, definitely is affected with this um, vice called corruption. Let's break it down in terms of what benefits um, might actually um, come from or actually stream down to the business community. As we well know, you know, small and medium-sized enterprises um, actually um, give a big chunk in terms of the economic growth curve in this particular country. Um, let's take a look at the effects of corruption in SMEs as well as um, taking a look at the potential of this SMEs which contribute um, majorly to the growth in Kenya. All right, perhaps um, as we conclude, um, if you can hear me, Wangari, um, we're taking a look at the importance Sorry, yes, of... yes, I can hear you. Okay, okay, perfect. Let's take a look at how important SMEs are in this particular economy. We well know that they contribute um, to the economic growth as we speak. And in terms of being affected with this vice called corruption, they might also bear a very big percentage in terms of being affected Let's take a look at the potential of SMEs in a, in a corruption-free environment and what they could do for our economy as a country. You're 100% right. When it comes to uh, SMEs, they are highly affected because when you, when you think about the cost of corruption, corruption has to be factored in into the input costs of any business. So if, if there's huge graft, uh, costs of supply, costs of, uh, of, of management, all the costs go up and as a, as a result small businesses are unable to, um, to ac actually achieve or to make some of those uh, expenditures or realize some of those expenditures because they, they've become too high. Number two, the quality of services also uh, is deteriorated because if you have people who are paying um, uh, bribes to provide services, for example if to get tenders, the people who are, are bribing are probably the people who don't have the best uh, services, goods or services to provide. So again, the quality of services deteriorates. SMEs are at a disadvantage because as they're trying to pro grow their business and provide a service that makes sense for, for the nation, um, they are not equipped or they don't have the big uh, bribe or big po the deep pockets to provide those bribes. And of course, now that uh, serves to kill the SMEs. And then the last one is in terms of technology. As you know, Kenya is very at the forefront when it comes to technology and, and, um, and innovation. But if we don't have uh, clear patent, uh, patents or a way of protecting um, of uh, copyrights, uh, and these are, are taken over by some of the big corporates so through uh, corrupt practices and are able to take um, the innovations of young uh, businesses, then the motivation and the drive for these young businesses to develop uh, new technologies also goes down. So across the board, SMEs are, are, are truly affected in terms of uh, being able to grow and to uh, provide uh, business, uh, uh, provide goods and services in the Kenyan economy. All right, many thanks, Wangari Muki, right there, an economist joining us, um, perhaps showing us a little bit more on the cost of corruption that is well spread, affecting um, government facilitated projects as well as um, non government projects in terms of the small medium enterprises. Many thanks, and this coming on the backdrop of the Transparency International. Um, the Corruption Perception Index that showed Kenya dropped a point in the latest ranking. Well, let's take a short break right here on Bottom Line Africa. We'll leave you with Destination Africa. More on the other side of the bill.